It feels great. I mean, it's, uh, you know, the, uh, they're so eager because the entire summer they're in the hallways and they're doing their stuff, but you're not to work with them. And now that we finally got out here for our first day of practice, uh, it's, it's obvious that uh, the work that they have done in the summer has paid off um, in terms of their, the way they're, they're able to maintain a high tempo for the entire practice. So, um, Good, good first day. What's it like now? Uh, shorts and helmets today, you going pads tomorrow? Or? Shorts and uh, helmets for two days, and then uh, shells, which is uh, shorts, helmets, and shoulder pads for two days, and then live on Friday. And by NCA, we will. Oh, is that what it is? Got to go 2 2 before you hop in the pool. And when's your first scrimmage? First scrimmage will be on Saturday. Saturday. What do you want to get accomplished between now and then? Well, between now and then is executing the offense at a high, high performance rate. In other words, the details. The execution of those details, uh, the tempo involved in it, uh, the timing of it, ball handling especially, and ball security, uh, those things being as efficient and as high tempo as it can possibly be. First impressions of that? Excited. Yeah, you know, again, the hard work in the summer, uh, not only in terms of the size. You know, everyone gets bigger, stronger, faster over the summer, but uh, they've been working on technique. Uh, they've been working on um, the scheme itself because uh, for the most part mentally, especially the older guys, I mean, they were, they were on point. They were on court and they were fast and making adjustments. And we threw a lot at them today. We're going to throw a lot at them this week. We're going to, we're going to try to reinstall 80 90 for the offense by Saturday and 80 uh, 90% of our defense by Saturday as well. And most of our special team stuff to just rep it for the next five weeks. And that's classroom stuff. You guys are just going to hit it hard this morning. Yeah, it's classroom, it's walkthrough, it's film sessions. It's a, it's a relentless process. You know, and, and these two weeks are the only two weeks in the entire year where you don't have any other obligations outside of football, so it's an inundation. It's almost like a uh, like a football laboratory, you know, for these guys, where it's just constant football IQ, uh, gaining knowledge towards their football IQ. What's uh, how many scrimmages do you have scheduled, and what's what, what's what's your plan through this next month and a half? We have four scrimmages scheduled, plus two special teams scrimmages scheduled. And what I mean by that is, in our regular scrimmages, we incorporate special teams, but we'll actually split the team into two squads and have a special teams game, kickoff, okay. kickoff, return. Um, Again, two completely different teams, different color jerseys, and playing for points and for a winner and a loser. And then we'll have four full scrimmages, with one of those being situational. Um, all of them uh, emphasizing just getting everybody ready to play, but finding out which one of these young guys can help us right now. Well, when are those scrimmages? When are they, they going to be? Uh, I know that we have one this Saturday and then one the Saturday after that. So, um, good. And after that, again, we have it as according to what uh, what we look like by the, in terms of health, in terms of reps that we need. So, right. But the first weeks are pretty much there. I know you guys are going to have an open practice for the fans. I think yes. it's next Friday. Do you know what you're going to plan for that? Yeah, uh, we're going to play ball. It's uh, it's not going to be a scrimmage. We would have, um, well, like, we're actually going to scrimmage the next day. It's a night practice. So mm -hmm. We're going to get at least three or four sessions underneath the lights. You know, we play our first game, certainly underneath the lights, and a couple throughout the season. Um, so we'll uh, we'll do everything from our individual drills to our seven on sevens, and of course, team periods involving all situations: third down, red zone, uh, two minute, uh, scoring zone, short yards and goal line, all that stuff. Uh, the story everyone's talking about is the quarterbacks. How do they look today? What do you look for? They look sharp. You know, I know that uh, both uh, both Wayne and Wes were very sharp. They were efficient with the football. You know, they, uh, their ball placement was, was fairly decent. You know, obviously. The, the uh, speed adjustment and, and the receiver uh, route running adjustments take a couple of weeks, you know, to sort out. But the, the emphasis on it is on everything just being very, very precise, you know, to to the millimeter, right? Making sure that we're coaching the details and that we're emphasizing those things to get those things on Saturday. If, if you're an opposing coach and you're scouting each of those guys, what are their strengths? You know, what, what do you see? You want me to do their work for them? Or? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do that, guys. All right, no, I understand that. But <laughs> yeah. just, just, just in, in generalities, the type of quarterbacks that they are. Yeah. They, uh, I tell you one thing that's really impressed us is the fact that that Wes can run. You know, Wes really runs it a lot, but I don't think he got credit for And I think Wayne's become a much more efficient quarterback than he got credit for. And again, I think today, between both of them, they had, uh, I think, 58 to 60 reps a piece of uh, live action. Again, shorts. Shorts, so it's, it's hard to tell, but, uh, you know, we're going to grade it. You know, see uh, how much improvement they have had made since the spring. Coach them up, get them better, install a bunch of more offense. They get after it again tomorrow. What can you tell me about Pooh? What's, what's he at? He's, I'll tell you, he's way ahead of schedule. I mean, he's already got the boot off. He's walking. Uh, the bones in his leg uh, and feels really well. Interesting surgeries they have nowadays. You know, they'll be able to come back a little bit quicker than usual. So uh, we, we expect him to be ready for Rutgers game week, and we expect him to play that game. What about, oh, go ahead. Uh, anybody in particular you stand out to you today? Well, uh, I'll tell you, it's good to have Jose Cheeseboro back. You know, he, uh, 
He uh, just joined us uh, a couple of days ago. I think uh, guys like uh, like Ice and Face him, you know, from, uh, fresh from Louisiana, really. Uh, it's a big, imposing sucker outside there at the defensive end. And it's a great player uh, outside. I like, uh, I really like what I saw in James Wiggins and Nick Kettleman. You know, two guys coming in out there attacking. But a very, very strong position in the year. They just never really determined what they can do offensively. It was great to see them go at it. But um, overall, just, just pleased with the amount of comp competition we saw here today. You know, our depth is increasing and improving. And uh, it was a good day. Did I see Foucher in a boot? Foucher is in a boot. What happened? Foucher sprained his ankle. Oh, it is a high ankle, but not a real severe one. Okay. So he's in a boot, but he's walking on it pretty good. Hell, he's even trying to jog out there. He's a, he's a tough guy, and he, in the meantime, you know, everyone that's uh, it was going to contribute somehow. And sometimes when a guy is hurt, and when a guy is as smart as him, that has such a great understanding of the scheme, he becomes an extra coach, is what he is. And he's really doing a good job helping to coach some of the other guys. You work with Cedric at that fitness a little bit? Yes. Yeah, Cedric, uh, he's done a pretty good job, but he hasn't reached the exact uh, goal that we have set for him. Continue training until he gets here to help us be a better football team. Now, I think there are some guys in the roster that were new. Paul, Paul Crawford's one of them. You talk about him. I guess he was a late addition. Late addition, a late signee. Uh, actually, initially a Mississippi State signee, and uh, he was able to get his release and join a six foot eight, two hundred thirty five pound outside linebacker slash defensive end. Um, certainly, no height issues there. You know, we're going to be batting down a lot of balls with him. Just a very athletic kid uh, that could do a lot of things. A uh, great young man, hard worker. They have to get their physicals up. Also excited about Dave Wilson, very excited about Jason Fitch, the defensive tackle from Kilgore Community College, real good football player, a uh, big presence inside that we're you know, always looking for. I think every team in the country is constantly searching for that, and um, hopefully they'll have their physicals done by the end of today and join us for tomorrow. Uh, Jordan White? Jordan White is still waiting on work from the NCAA, from the eligibility side. Is that, is that something you anticipate having soon? Or? I think so, you know, but again, you know, until all that stuff happens, which is kind of a wait and see thing. You know, and I know several teams around the country uh, face the same issues with stuff like that. So, uh, you know, we're just going to be patient. I think he's done a great job academically, and hopefully things will be worked out very soon. Any other eligibility issues you guys have? You know, I know uh, Ron Robinson is at Arizona Western. Uh, that's where you know, we signed and placed him. And then, um, uh, as of right now, Richard London is not reporting. He'll probably join us in January or sometime. What's the issue? I just, I was oh, okay. I was oh, okay. So now all that stuff I'd rather not comment on, so I trust you guys too. We'll just report they're not here. Yes. Report that they're not here, you know, because uh, I'm pretty sure I'm okay to comment on it, but from a, a college coach, it's better not to. That's information for it. It needs to be there, out there, but without. Yeah, right. And uh, first day of practice, how do you really, how do you plan on what, on what to do? I mean, the guys just got here, kind of like, how does it work out? I think hopefully, uh, you guys didn't get to see what we do today with that many bodies out here. We actually have the ones and twos on this side and the threes on this side with selected twos going back and forth. And that's in order, to, you know, you can't sit out here for four hours. You bring your team to the ground. So in those two, two hours and 15 minutes, what you want to do is get as many reps as possible, get it all on tape and coach off of tape. So we were running two entire different team periods at the same time while our O-line and D-line was battling one to two groups at a time. So that's a lot of bodies. Going. Sure. Uh, requires a ton of organization, um, a ton of uh, you know, coaching involved in it, but it is coaching at a high, high pace, you know? High, high pace, and you know, it worked out well. Do you guys use other fields or is this your, your own? Like, this is all we have. Yeah. This is all we have. What, what's that'd, a, be, that'd be a good thing to start. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's, a, what's a typical day for these guys? Like, what's what's their day like? Yeah, they're up at 5.30 in the morning, okay? They're at 5.30 in the morning, they're eating breakfast at uh, 6 o'clock, and they're getting, it's kind of like the Navy SEALs. Did you ever see that movie when they yeah. swallow their breakfast in six seconds? <laughs> they do something similar, and they come over uh, here to get treatment and taping, which starts at 6, so some guys just, you know, snack up and get here early. Uh, 7.30 meetings, practice at 9, practice for those couple hours, go get lunch, get their feet up, drink a ton of Gatorade. In the process of going there, they hop in the cold tubs for rest, for recovery purposes. They drink uh, their Hulk juice or recovery shakes. They go to the chow hall, make sure they eat good food. Our strength staff is over there monitoring what they eat, making sure that they're getting better, eating the right things. And then from there, they come back at three o'clock, dress and ready for lifting. Um, we'll have a team meeting, quick overview of the practice, special teams for 30 minutes. Then the offense will watch film, the defense will lift. An hour and 20 minutes later, they'll switch 5.30 we'll go out for a walkthrough, 6 o'clock we'll go to dinner, come back at 7.30, reinstall, 
well, or I'm sorry, cover what we just did again, and then install the next day's practice session until about 10.30. So these five. guys have barely any time to get into any trouble, huh? <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, we don't speak in terms of trouble. They have nah, just football time, I know, I know. and they're dedicated to football. So um, the thing that's important is that you know this is these are now one a days. You know the NCA has gone away from two a days. You have five days of what they call acclimatization. And that's what these five days are. One practice a day. You can have them all day, but it's one practice a day. Two in shorts, two in shells. They don't, and then they don't count uh, walkthroughs then? Uh, no. Because those are quarters. No. Now, if you came out in helmets and everything, yes, it counts as a practice. Okay. You know, so, uh, and then the other part, next week, we're allowed to start our two-day session, which we'll have Monday, Monday, Friday. So the old school days.